May the 4th be with you, Adam here, Blackfire Productions, and I am back with another Toy Tuesday unboxing and review, and today I have what I've been waiting for for a very long time. Uh, so my wife, back Christmas, um, ended up ordering uh, the child, so Hot Toys uh, LMS 013, so life-size uh, figure of the child for me for Christmas. Um, originally the date I think was like December to February, um, and she's never purchased anything like this before so she has no idea how the whole waiting process works and everything um, but we just got it at the end of last week or so and I'm super excited uh, so I'm gonna be doing some photos with this guy probably carrying him around in like a little satchel uh, side bag who knows um, but yeah really excited to break into this guy not break in that's completely the wrong word but to open up this box ever so gen uh, you know graciously and uh, gently uh, and get it unboxed but we are going to do an unboxing of the child or Grogu uh, for you today uh, the life-size figure so let's get into this box so here we are with the box itself. You have your standard um, silver inlining for Star Wars in the writing here. Nice picture of obviously the child or Grogu on the front. Um, this is a uh, slip case over top of the actual box. Um, so you can see it here on its side if I can just get it in there. It's so big I can't even get it on camera with, how, with my current camera setup. I'd almost need it like top down view uh, to uh, do this unboxing because the box is just so big. Um, so, and yeah, why not do this unboxing on Star Wars Day, right? Like, it is the best uh, day to, I think, put this out. So, uh, yeah, so let's t this, take the slipcase off. It is, and it's heavy. Like, it is a heavy uh, figure, for sure. Um, I was, when I pulled them out of the box and everything like that at one point, I almost dropped them in. It kind of had me a little bit afraid. Um, so, the box itself, the inside box... Um, or the actual box itself is uh, styled after the hover pram. Uh, you can see all the weathering on the imaging there, as well as like an orangey brown, almost like burnt orange colored. Let me see if I can pick that up there so you can see some artwork on the side there. Uh, this top part just flips open like so, but yeah. And then obviously you have the credits and everything else on the back. Um, like I said, it is a hefty box, and when you open up the top, you can see that the child is sitting in there like so. So I'm gonna pull him out with all this, uh, all this stuff, uh, lay him on the book table uh, gently, uh, and then go from there, because I want to make sure there's space and everything, and, and with this size, there's just not space on the table I'm using. So I'll come back after I get it all set up. This just shows you how he's packaged. Uh, you have your top cover, obviously, protecting him. Uh, so, pull that off, set that aside, and then you can pull him out in his one in the first layer. So, and then you have all the other stuff underneath. I have already opened him up and taken the plastic off and everything and had a look at him. Um, so yeah, and then you get into the bottom layers and all the other gear. So I'll pull this stuff out now. There we go with all the supplies that comes with him um or accessories not supplies accessories um but yeah so obviously you have your instructions that come with them uh, i can open those up and give you a look at those uh i absolutely love, <laughs> love this guy the fact that he's life-size and everything else is just it it's so cool um and i've been waiting for him for at least four months now uh, but yeah so you have your instructions like so and you can flip them over, and that's the back side. So it talks about how to get everything in, the magnetic hand with the uh, knob from the Razor Crest, uh, the, the acrylic rod and how to work the stand, everything else. So super easy stuff, uh, nothing too major with that. Um, you do have the Mythosaur necklace, the logo there. It's a nice metallic sort of gun metal there. It's not actually metal, it's been painted that way. Um, it's just plastic. Uh, with the leather thong, um, which you just take Grogu's ears off and plug it around his neck, put the ears back on. Uh, you have the little knob from the Razor Crest. I'm actually surprised that this wasn't a little bit bigger, but it even has like the part where you, it's showing you where the um, threads are, where you're threading uh, on onto the rod that's in the Razor Crest for the handle. I'm surprised it's not a little bit bigger because it just seems like small for life size, like grabbing onto uh, when I'm thinking like a, like a, um, 
the shifter sticks and stuff like that um, in a vehicle or at least in a car so who knows maybe it is the size of it from the show but that seems a little bit long, uh, small obviously your, your acrylic rod clear acrylic rod uh, you have your base here um, almost like a meshy like system under there um, it would almost be cool to have some lights underneath that almost like they do um, you can get some stuff probably in there Hold on a sec. So I had to go and get a screwdriver because on the bottom of the, the case, you have a spot for three AAA batteries. There's obviously no connectors in there or anything, um, but you do have screws in here. I'm, I'm almost curious. I'm not very mechanically inclined um, or um, electrician uh, for wiring and stuff like that, but um, there's spots in here that look like you could almost uh, place lights in there. Um, if you were talented enough, I guess, and after unscrewing the bottom and sort of give a light effect from underneath the tiles or the mesh here um, uh, for Grogu. I think that would be a really cool thing. Uh, I might have to see what I can do. Uh, acrylic rod wise, it literally just plugs into the hole and then you can just get it down there and into the next one and away you go and then Grogu can sit on that in your display if you are so inclined. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, you have in total six pairs of hands. You have the ones that he has uh, on him, um, which this one here is the Razor Crest uh, grabbing one with a magnetic hand. So it just literally just sits in there and you can feel the magnetic pull. Um, but yeah, so that's that's that. Uh, I do love the painting, the faint pinkish tone uh, to the green, and you can see like here the the green. Uh, I don't know what that is. That's weird. Uh, well, green and a little red spot <laughs> on there uh, from the weathering and, and paint applications on there. So that's at hand. Uh, you have it looks like left and right uh, force using hands, um, which when I was sort of taking out of the package, I had to play with him a little bit and he was stealing my son's cookies in a photo uh, that I did. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, and then it looks like relaxed hands, but I love like the wrinkles on the forehands and on the fingers and everything else there. The coloring on the fingernails are awesome. It goes from like a, a suede brown to a little bit darker tone. Just such a, a good piece. Um, and then the ears as well. These are sort of like the downward ears. He does have ears on the body, which I'll go over here in a second. Uh, you can see the faded uh, transition from like the pink on the inside out. Um, and then again, that sort of like speckling of the green on those. These are magnetics and they're marked with a left and right. So you know uh, what side they go on, but it's pretty evident just by looking at them either way. <laughs> um, but yeah, the only thing that they're missing on these ears is just like little little bits of hair, I think. Uh, sort of like what Grogu has on his head. Just little bits of hair off to the edge there. Just, But in all honesty, besides that, it looks great. Um, so let's grab Grogu himself and take a look at him after I reattach this hand. Now taking a look at Grogu himself. Um, let's take a look at his head here first off top down so uh, you can see his big beady eyes with like the brownish gold uh, amber sort of look in there uh, I don't know how close I can get them but they have a nice gloss and shine to them uh, which is awesome you can see the uh, pink around the eyelids uh, as around the cheek area um, it's a nice soft sort of rubber around his nose. Uh, you can see the hair on his head there as well and a nice sort of definition and tone with the shading inside of all the crevices and everything else. Uh, you can see the other straight out ears. They just sort of pull out and they're magnetized so they can just clip back in there. And then obviously he has some jaw articulation. So I'm just supporting the back of his head as I do this uh, and his mouth can open um, as well as close. I'm not gonna open it all the way because that's probably about as much as I'm going to want it to open. Um, and most times he'll probably just have his mouth closed. But yeah, uh, honk his nose there because it's nice and rubbery. It's just so cool. Um, you can see the, the layers of cloth underneath there. It looks like it's just buckled in uh, with a button. And then you have like a padded suit under there as well. So we'll refix that. Um, he always has this like nice and bunched up around his head and everything. Uh, articulation of the head, uh, it does go down a nice amount. Uh, you can turn it as well. Um, I'm not going to turn it all the way around, but it looks like it doesn't want to stop. 
maybe about there. I think it might stop. I'm not going to force it. Uh, and it does go up a little bit too, because there are definitely those scenes where Grogu is standing there looking up at you, um, like so, or at the Mandalorian uh, in a similar fashion. Uh, there's no articulation in the torso. Uh, it's one solid piece. Let's just open them up here uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, just at the camera. Sorry about that. But yeah, so one solid piece. <clears throat> You can see here, this is where the acrylic rod uh, goes in, uh, and that's what the legs look like. So basically, you, you have some movement going up with the legs, uh, and then you can rotate them as well. And then the foot itself rotates as needed. Um, but yeah, and I, it, it does, they do come out to the side a little bit, um, but I'm not going to do it super much. <laughs> Let's get that back down there twist his legs back into the proper position. Uh, hands wise, they obviously spin and they're super easy. They just pull off and you can, let's see if I can get in there without that hand there. Trying to get it up here, but you can see that it's just a peg system. There it is there that they slot onto. And that's the part that is articulated in the elbow. It's only the one, um, elbow joint there and, and it's about a 90 degree sort of movement there uh, so I'll just slot that hand right back in like so and that is that uh, there is I think a bit of a butterfly joint type thing um, in there you can obviously rotate up imagine if I broke this my wife would kill me I'm not going to try to obviously but it can go up and then you can get his elbows in that so that's about as far I think as it goes um, it says 90 degrees. I'm not going to go any further than that just because I don't want to force it and wreck it. Um, but yeah, and then it doesn't really come out all that well. I don't find like a, you can get about a 45 degree sort of outwards um, instead of straight at his side. But yeah, so that's the bare minimum articulation with him. Uh, it is a very heavy piece and I find that his feet don't like to sit super flat so like to stand him on his own he's always very very top heavy obviously because of his head and everything but because he doesn't have the flat feet he is a little bit harder to uh, get to stand it can happen and I have done it um, but it's just that much harder so yeah um, but that's Grogu in a nutshell I, I really do like the the paintwork on him is fantastic um, you can get him to sit here as well sort of like where he was like sitting with the kids and everything and then let's see if I can get him to actually stay sitting is the thing no that doesn't want to that doesn't want to go maybe tilt his head forward to keep that weight distributed you'd have to probably prop him up something like that to get him to sit um, who knows, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking of pictures right now outside and the weather isn't permitting today or else I'd do one later on today, but, uh, with all the rain that we've been getting the past week, um, but uh, my son has a Mandalorian costume. So what I might do is have like, uh, him dress up with his gloved hand and arm and, uh, I might have him like passing up, uh, or handing down the mythosaur, uh, necklace to him. Uh, let's see if I can get that head up a little bit sort of looking up like this, you know, um, type thing as, as he's reaching for the mythosaur necklace. That's what I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, so that is, uh, the child, uh, what is it? It is LMS 013, um, or you can just search hot toys, the child, really cool piece. Uh, definitely like it. Uh, I don't know where to put it though. I don't know if I should put it with my other hot toys figures in my, uh, shelves behind me. Um, or if I should, go somewhere else with it. Like I was thinking in the house just cause it's such a cool piece, such an amazing piece. Um, but yeah, anyhow, hopefully you guys liked this, uh, toy Tuesday video. Enjoy your star Wars day and the rest of the week. Cause it looks like there's going to be a ton of star Wars stuff ha happening this week, uh, through different, um, companies and stuff like that and, uh, groups. So anyhow, please remember to like, share and subscribe until next time. Ignite your hobby.